Choosing where to store the data for your business can be a pretty daunting task. Traditionally, small and medium-sized businesses that didn't have great internet connections would store and process all their information on dedicated local computers, otherwise known as servers, in their offices. This type of setup is referred to as in-house or on-premise, and depending on the size of the company and its requirements, this could range from a single server under a desk to a couple of servers in a cupboard like this, all the way up to a dedicated server room with its own air conditioning and backup power supplies. It's the only practical solution for companies with terrible broadband, still the case in many rural areas. If something goes wrong with your server and you have a technical engineer also in the office, it can also be quite easy to fix it quickly. Businesses have complete control over their resources, including the physical security. Businesses requiring specialist software for things like animation rendering, which require a lot of processing power, can create a system perfect for their needs. Resilience is often poor, as it's not always cost effective to buy things like backup generators just for a few servers. Reliability often also suffers for remote workers and satellite offices. This can be because of minor issues like office broadband becoming congested to more serious problems like extended power outages. If you don't have a technical engineer physically on site 24-7, out-of-hours fixes for things like router crashes can take a long time to fix or be offline for the entire weekend. Office space is often at a premium, especially in London. A room dedicated to server space is space that can't be used by workers and also what happens when the IT needs of the company outstrip the available space in the server room. Over the past couple of decades, cloud computing has become a serious contender to replace on-premise setups. For companies that have a fast enough internet connection, the main advantage of cloud over on-premise include there's no capex cost associated with buying hardware. This is great news for startups that may not have much cash available to hand. Resilience is also already built in. Most good cloud operators will store their servers in data centers, which by their nature have things like backup generators and fire suppression systems already installed. Because cloud servers are often stored in data centers, they have access to the fastest and most resilient internet connectivity. You don't always know physically where your data is being stored. You may know which country it's in, though not always, but the cloud has to live somewhere and you don't know the quality or reliability of the data center or office it's currently stored in. Now, while CapEx costs are reduced, the OpEx costs over time can be quite high. If you're using your cloud provider to transfer large files or data that's sensitive to poor internet connectivity, such as voice over IP calls, a slow or lost internet connection can significantly reduce productivity. Which brings us to our third and final option, putting your servers into a co-location data center like this. The best way of describing co-location is, we're a bit like big yellow storage, but rather than looking after other people's junk, we look after other companies' servers. Co-location offers complete control. Not only can business select which DC provider they use and by proxy where it's physically located, but because the hardware still belongs to them, it can be designed to their specific needs. Co-location also offers great security. Unlike on-prem server rooms where access is open to everybody, data centers are restricted to nominated technical engineers and business owners. And unlike the cloud solutions, who typically won't let you visit their data centers, you can come and audit the security processes in person. And finally, co-location is vendor and carrier neutral which means companies have a lot more flexibility in being able to migrate into whatever platform is going to be best suited for them further down the line. By virtue of the fact that servers still belong to the companies that are running them, businesses that want to use co-location will still have to find the money to buy the hardware in the first place. For companies with not much cash, cloud will probably still be the best option for them. And for companies that do have the cash, but perhaps don't have the technical expertise in-house, they may want to consider buying a private cloud solution from a co-location provider, which in itself is a really good halfway house between co-location and the public cloud. You can find more information about the differences between co-location, public cloud, private cloud, and hybrid solutions on our website. And because we offer all of these services, we can offer impartial advice on which setup will work best for your business.